Hello, everyone. Welcome to the chat today. Let's see. I'm going to pull this up and make sure the camera is pointing the right direction. <laughs> this is called low budget production right here. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's not too bad. Well, how is everyone today? Um, it's big football weekend, so I've got my Steelers, my game day jersey that I made that was a Steelers jersey. I know Terry Bradshaw's um, 70s guy, but you know, I'm a 70s girl, so <laughs> what can I say? So anyway, how is everyone today? Oh, hi Rhonda, I think you're the first one here. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi Dee, nice to see you guys. Gorgeous sunny here. I think it's cold, but it's sunny. I'll take it. <laughs> Later on, um, there's going to be dueling um, terrible towel on this side and cowbell on the other side because <laughs> the, the Steelers are actually playing the Browns in the playoffs tonight. So um, we won't hear the cowbell today, but I'm sure tonight we're going to hear a lot of it. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Hi, Teresa. Did you have a good walk? I bet it was beautiful today. Hi, Kathy Ann. Ann, hi from Tucson. I bet it's nice and warm there, huh? Hi, Joyce. Hi, Jay. Nice to see you. Hi, D. It's 40 and sunny. Yep. It, it's... Uh, we didn't have any snow yesterday. We've actually had two sunny days in a row. And it's like in the upper 30s, so it's not terrible. Um, we ended up getting, well, I'll tell you, we had a, we had a like, whim yesterday and um, bought some furniture. <laughs> so we had our whole house torn apart yesterday. But um, those, t those, they, they put that, those, um, that furniture out at Costco and it's very tempting. So we ended up buying, getting rid of our sectional, buying a sofa. Now I've got to make some pillows for it. So that'll be fun. Hi, Gail. Nice to see you. Assembly line sewing skirts for the play. When is that play? You've been sewing those um, costumes for a little while here. But uh, I bet that, but you're anxious for that to be sort of ready and done. <laughs> Number 12 is Terry Bradshaw from the 70s, Adrian. <laughs> I know, see? But like I said, I, I'm a 70s girl, so um, I'm not huge football. I mean, yes, college, Ohio State. Tomorrow night, I'll be like, oh, you don't even want to be around me tomorrow. But <laughs> um, my husband is a diehard Steelers fan, and I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to like the NFL for him. So, and now that I, like, I, I start to see, like, names I recognize from college football, and it's starting to mean a little more to me. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, like, I just told him, I just never feel like I have, like, a horse in the race with NFL, but, um, I don't know. With the playoffs, I'm sort of excited for him, and, um, you know, there's a real rivalry around here because this is Ohio and there's Browns, Browns fans all around us. So should be interesting. Uh, Kathy and sunny but cold in New Jersey. Hi, Verna. Good to see you. I know it's warm where you are in Arizona. <laughs> Hi, Alberta. Hi, Paula. Hi, Dot. Nice to see you. You remember Terry Bradshaw, too. I think he's, um, well, yeah, you're, from, you're in Pennsylvania. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, um, my husband's been a fan that long. In fact, he wanted a Jack Lambert jersey that I made him. His, his says Lambert on it. So that goes back even further. But, um, he was a fan back when they won the Super Bowl, like a whole bunch of like five times in a row or something. And um, yeah, Terry Bradshaw was always his hero. So when I made mine, I decided I really didn't have anybody that I could relate to um, that's current. So I just, although Ben Roethlisberger 
is from Finley, which is just south of us a little ways, but um, a lot of people around here really like Ben, but um, I don't know. I just thought I'd do a throwback jersey. Hi, Brenda. Nice to see you. Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> you heard me talking about the Browns. <laughs> well, um, you know what? I, I, we're not Browns fans, but we, we live in Toledo area. So um, I know I'm, I'm an Ohio girl, but when it comes to NFL, my husband has just been a Steelers fan for a really long time. But tomorrow night, on the other hand, OH. <laughs> now, if anybody is out there can answer me, I'll know you're from Ohio. Or at least an Ohio State fan. Happy New Year, Marilyn. Nice to see you. Oh, Paula, I need to go see what that one looks like. Uh, a Vera pattern from Forget-Me-Not Patterns. Ooh, I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you did. All right. Is it on sale or something? I've got to go check that. That's one I haven't seen. I'm going to go. Well, Heidi, I wish your team well. <laughs> I'm not a rabid Steelers fan. My husband is, though. Um, but we'll see if you've never been, if you haven't been in this chat before, usually when I sit here on Sunday afternoons, people can hear ringing and that's because it's my crazy neighbor across the street who has, he, he has like a man cave in his garage and every Sunday they watch football and he's a Browns fan. Like, I mean, they, they bark over there. So you know how, what a big fan they are. And you can hear the cowbell. Usually the people here in the chat can hear his cowbell. And I told him that once and he just laughed and said, oh, um, I guess I'm famous or something like that. But he's a really sweet guy. Oh, yes. Big Ten. I, and I, there's nobody I like to see lose more than Alabama. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, but um, they're just so big for their britches. <laughs> so I'd love to see us really, really beat Alabama. Um, so the SEC in general is not my favorite conference, but um, only because I'm a Big Ten girl. Although, I have to say, I am an Aggies fan. When we lived in Houston and my nieces and nephews all went to Texas A&M, so... Um, if I'm going to root for one SEC team, they didn't used to be SEC, but they are now. I'm going to root for the Texas, uh, the uh, not Texas, the uh, Texas A&M Aggies. So, um, yeah, that was when we lived in Conroe, Texas. It was that's who we rooted for for everything. <laughs> so it kind of grows on you. Let's see. One of the Kentucky boys went to the Browns. Yeah. Oh, Vera's free. Now I really do have to go get it. Let's see. Let me let me find it. Forget me not patterns. Vera. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's super cute. Does it have Different, oh yeah, different sleeve options. I like that. Well, I'm going to be getting that too. I like that a lot. Oh, here's the line drawings. Let me see if I can hold this up so people who haven't seen it can see it. A little bit similar to the Cambria, but the, there's a V-neck. Can you see that? And it's free, you guys. That's cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Maybe I'll do a pattern review on that one. I like, I should do a free pattern roundup and do, make them all and um, do some, like my top 10 free top patterns or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. I think I've done free patterns before, but I don't know if I've ever done tops. I know I did one yard tops, but um, I don't know if I've ever done free. After a while, you go, did I do that? 
That leads me to something, um, what I want to do. I was thinking about this the other day. So lately, I've been getting asked, um, I wish you'd do a video on this or that. And um, I've already done a video on the thing that they say, and then I'm able to point them to it. But I thought, you know, maybe what I should do is like on Throwback Thursday, maybe just throw up an older video so that it's sort of brand new again. Maybe for some, if you didn't see it before. So I think I'm going to start doing that on the Facebook group. Um, just throw up a, a video that um, is from, you know, it's got, I'm going on two years with my channel now. So um, there's a lot of content there and even I've forgotten what's in it. So. I'm sure you guys don't remember. <laughs> well, I'm going to definitely check that out, Paula, for sure. Um, let's see. Hi, Joanne from Massachusetts. And Elizabeth, good to see you. Let's see who else is here. Camp Calamari. <laughs> Love it. Yes, I think that might be a good idea. I'll put that on my list of topics to do. I'll have to give me a little time because I'm going to need to probably some new ones that I haven't seen. I'm probably going to need to make uh, and just so I can evaluate them. Let's see. Please do a review. I'm in love with this pattern and it was so easy to sew and very flattering. It looks like it would be. I love the long cuffs like that. That's really cool. And I think you could really hack that a, a bunch of different ways, the way it looks. I'm in the middle of um, doing a test for Love Notions. I ju just started, and um, so that's kind of taken up a little time right now, but I'm going to definitely make that pattern after, after that. <laughs> Jay says, Kim, I'm looking at fabric for the everyday tea pattern. A bit out of practice for stretches and overlocking. Any suggestions for fabric? Well, I think that this time of year, especially, you know, in the summertime, the everyday tea can be a little warm in it, but um, double brush polyester is really good for that pattern. Um, and also cotton lycra. If you want something that breathes cotton lycra, that's what this is. It's kind of a little bit um, heftier, um, but it's cotton, so it breathes, but double brush poly is really, um, really a good solid. That's what I've got. I've got an everyday tea I made in that. I have another one that I made in the sort of, um, it was a, a cotton spandex blend, but it had a lot of spandex. So it was kind of like one of those that grows and that was not good for the, um, for the, uh, everyday tea because it just kind of uh, stretches out too much um, and if you ever have clothes in that fabric um, the everyday tea um, or well not the everyday tea I mean the, um, the the fabric you know what I'm talking about the kind of cotton spandex or rayon spandex that just grows on the hanger you hang it up and it's droops 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 because it's heavy um, the best thing to do, I, most of my clothes, I like don't, I, I put them in the dryer, but I take them out after like four, three or four minutes and hang them up just to kind of fluff the wrinkles out. And then I hang them up and don't do that with those because they just grow on the hanger. Um, either dry them on very, very low or air or lay them flat like you would a sweater because they just will grow and grow and grow. I've got one breezy top from Ellie and Mac that I accidentally hung up completely wet and it literally it's it's unwearable now it just totally ruined it because it's just droops so low so um, be careful with that kind of fabric and also they say um, with that fabric before you hem something like leave it hang for a day or so so that if it's going to pull down you know it won't end up too long on you then I don't know what got me to that thought, but just because I guess I had that everyday tea in that fabric and it, it's actually great for jammies. I wear it as a jammy top now because it's really comfy, but it's too stretched out to wear as a top. So yeah, no, I, none of those, the, the, uh, 
double brush poly, you know, as long as you've got enough room in your pattern, it's not going to cling hardly at all. And definitely cotton lycra, you know, obviously it has to fit properly, but um, it's not going to naturally just cling to you. Kathy Ann says, I have a few rayon shirts ready-made that grow. I hang it to dry. Yeah, I know, right? They just, I know, and you really don't want to put rayon in the dryer either. So I've, a couple times, I've just put them on in the dryer and put it on air, you know, with no heat, and that's been good. Or I just, I lay it out on my um, patio table and let it, let it dry in the sun. Um, yeah, it's I, that's not my very favorite kind of fabric just because of that very reason. I like to hang up my clothes right away and that I don't really want to leave them in the dryer, but you know, you can't, you just can't hang them up when they're wet or they just grow. Um, hi, Teresa. What's a good pattern for two way stretch? I recently got Liverpool that's only two way. Well, Ollie and Mac, I think most of theirs, they recommend four-way stretch. So I would rule those out. Um, but there are plenty of things. You, you want to look for something that says a more stable knit because it's obviously not going to be stable if it's four-way stretch. So, um, I mean, like any t-shirt pattern would be okay as long as you'd be really careful to cut it on the... Um, you know, so that the stretch is going around your body, even including the band and everything. Um, make sure there's enough stretch. Um, like ribbing, sometimes ribs, rib knit only stretches one direction or else it stretches a lot more in one direction than the other. Um, and those are okay for t-shirts and, um, and things. Um, blouses, they're really good for most tops, I think you could probably get away with unless it has features that just need that four-way stretch. Um, but I would definitely just look at the recommendations on the pattern. And um, sometimes it'll just say, you know, 50% uh, stretch fabrics or whatever. And then as long as it's got the 50%, you're fine. Um, but if it does say four-way stretch, I wouldn't, I wouldn't chance, um, you know, not not having four-way stretch. All right. Can you tell me how to get numbers, etc., on the game day shirt? Yeah, I actually just cut them on my Cricut um, with heat transfer vinyl. My husband said he didn't like these letters that I put on here because they're not like big enough. They don't look collegiate. So, or not collegiate, but they don't look sporty enough. So next time I think I'll use a different font. Um, but that's all you just do, you know, to cut your letters on the Cricut and, uh, and numbers, I mean. And then um, I just looked at jerseys online that, that they're selling in the stores and with the details that they had. And then I cut those on my Cricut. And so I do the number in the front and back, the name across the top. Um, the numbers on the shoulders, which you can omit. I had omitted it on, on um, um, I did, I did one. I omitted it on one of them. I can't remember which. And for this, rather, now with the game day, they tell you to, um, use some fabric and make the stripes. Well, I wanted to use vinyl. So what you do is so that you can still stretch your sleeve as you don't go all the way around. So you only go, um, I recommend don't, you know, leave at least half of it there so it can stretch. And it works out really well. Sorry for my big arms, but um, it works out really well to do it that way. I've done several like that, and it works out. Um, I like the look of the vinyl because I think it's more authentic if you're trying to make a sports jersey. But um, definitely different than making like a blouse or something for yourself. But... You know, it's the occasion. I like to have them um, when there's a big game day like today. Um, I haven't worn it since I made it until today. So, <laughs> but um, my Ohio State shirts, on the other hand, get worn every Saturday in football season. But you know, not I, on Sundays. I'm normally dressed up for church. So, hi from down the road, Priscilla. 
in case you guys don't know, Priscilla lives probably less than a mile from me and we're old friends. And she uh, wandered into our sewing group and I was like, whoa, <laughs> there's a name I know. We haven't seen each other in a while, so it's kind of cool. Terry Bradshaw can sing. I've never heard him sing. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to look up on YouTube or something. Thank you. So Terry Bradshaw sings, that's interesting. So that Vera top, what kind of fabric did you use, um, Paula? This looks like, okay, it's designed for knit fabrics that have fun, full, uh, and, oh, okay. It's designed for knit fabrics. It has a fun, full length, full sleeve, and elegantly subtle V-neck. This take on a bishop sleeve features two different cuff options, or you can leave the cuff off for a simple flared sleeve. A little more challenging than a basic T pattern, that's because of the V-neck, but it, I think it's just gorgeous. Um, you can get a scoop neck, scoop neck extension if you don't want the V. I think the V is, I love V-necks. You know what? If you're a large busted, V-necks are really good for um, your just your overall look. It kind of takes away, breaks up that full bust shelf, you know, that you get. So I, I think V-necks are just very, very flattering on people. And, oh my goodness, they even have layered PDFs. Awesome. They've got some other nice looking patterns too. I wish I could share my screen. And they've got a pleated tee pattern. What's that one? Oh, look at that sleeve detail. It's all about the sleeve. Oh, how cute is that? The, look up the iris pleated tee. Oh, so cute. So, so cute. I might have to sew some of these. And they have a beautiful full skirt. Mm. Let's, let's look at their whole catalog. If you have your computer, shop with me. <laughs> wow, I just don't know why I haven't uh, really, I think I've seen these, but I just haven't um, delved into them. A raglan dress pattern, how cute. <gasps> these are really cute. Oh, wow. Definitely going to be sewing up some of these. Nice. Thank you, Paula. Love getting new recommendations from people for patterns. And that's one of the things I really want to do this year is try some new ones. And I, I have my huge pile of tried and true, but I need to, I need to uh, mix it up and um, try some new stuff. <laughs> I love that pleated sleeve on that iris tee. I wonder if you couldn't just take that sleeve and put it on to the uh, Vera. Uh, I have to see what the, whether the arm, if the arm size line up, then you could. If they don't line up, then you'd have to copy the arm size from one pattern and just take it over to the other, which isn't hard to do. Um, really just trace it and then just lay it on top of the other pattern and sort of line up where the, you know, where the arm side comes in and you're good to go. So it isn't hard at all. Um, so if you like a sleeve on one pattern and you want to put it on another, that's super easy thing to do. Wrong team, but nice jersey. Okay. <laughs> Can we agree on Ohio State, though, maybe? <laughs> Is my house that size? It's small. I mean, it, I don't know. For here, around here, I guess our house is, yeah, they're about the same size as the ones across the street. Yeah. Not huge, though. It, it just probably looks bigger than they are. 
it's two stories, but there's, it's not a lot of space really. Um, it was bigger. I mean, we had a big, you know, a lot of family home at, when we bought this. Now it's just him and I, but um, we'll probably downsize in the next couple of years because our, you know, our kids are up and gone. So um, our nest is empty, but one of these days we'll probably, <laughs> probably downsize. Merino knit didn't have much stretch, but it sewed beautifully. Awesome. A tiny bit extra on the side seams. That's another idea if you have a fabric that doesn't have quite as much stretch as what you think. Adding a little is a really good idea too. Um, and because, you know, if you make it and it feels a little baggy, you can always take it in. Um, but if you make it and you don't give yourself enough room, then you're... You know, you, you've either got to lose weight or start over. <laughs> Mother always wore V-necks. She was five foot and large busted. V is supposed to lengthen you also. Yep, that's what I've heard too. Um, I love listening to some of the stylists online about things like that. Yeah, I mean, I, like you take any advice like that with a grain of salt because what ultimately matters is that you feel good about yourself. But, you know, some of those things, like I never thought, I never th gave a thought to. I actually didn't like V-necks because I thought they were masculine. I don't know why I had that in my head. And then, and then um, when I read that, they are actually lengthen your, and I'm short, so I wanted that. And now I, when I see that, I really do like the V-necks better. So I, I get that. Isn't that gorgeous, Jay? I think so, too. The company's forget-me-not patterns. And it's going to be Paula's fault if we all make them <laughs> because she's the one who just told us all about it. All right, let's see. Tony said her sister just made the iris pleated tee, but the fabric she chose was problematic. But she did like it. Awesome. Oh, wait, Elizabeth. <laughs> I don't know if this were, if that game was tonight, I, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd probably be singing Hang On Sloopy or something because I'm so excited. I'm just so excited for that game. And then they thought it was going to get postponed for a little while because some of the special teams guys had COVID. But apparently, I don't know, apparently they're all right or they got they decided to do it anyway. But um, everybody thinks Alabama is going to win. But I don't know. When you look at Justin Fields and Olave and um, Sermon, that guy, Trey Sermon, number eight, he's like a tank. So I, I don't know. They might pull it off. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to see. And if they don't, well, at least they got there, right? Um, <laughs> could be a few more when I try sewing it together. Oh, okay. I've been learning German today. I found a great German bag pattern, bought a pattern, and now my German has improved by at least 20 words. <laughs> wow. I don't know German at all. I'd be... Sunk. I know Spanish, but um, what I know in Spanish is Texas Hospital Spanish. So <laughs> I worked in the, you know, I worked in the open heart recovery room in Houston. So I know how to ask people to take a deep breath and that kind of stuff. And um, I've tried to learn Spanish because we go to Mexico pretty often, but um, <laughs> I still don't, I'm still not good at it. Viscose and elastane. Oh, wow. So it was a rayon spandex. That is a problematic fabric. We were just talking about that. Um, the iris and double brush poly would be gorgeous. Are the games usually on Monday? No. Uh -uh. Just the, This is the national championship game. This is it. 
This is the big one, and that one's always on a Monday. But the games in 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 the U.S. are the college games are generally all on um, Saturdays, except for like the semifinals and the actual national championship. But the national championship is always on a Monday, like two weeks after New Year's. So pretty exciting stuff. Jaylee uh, Yoko Top. Oh, I think I've seen that one. I love Jaylee patterns. They're really good. Square neck roll top. Oh, cute. That's like a sweater. Really cute. And it's free. Oh, that one looks really simple. Has super simple lines. Let me see. Let me show you this one. This is the Yoko that she was talking about. Another free pattern. That you can download. How fun. This is a good topic for chatting. Anybody else have a, have um, freebies that they like a lot? Obviously, the Laundry Day Tea is free. The Harper Cardigan, if you haven't made that, that's an amazing pattern that's free. Um, one of the best, I think, one of the best cardigans that, you know, we've had. Hopefully, it's not blurry for anybody this, this week, because last week we had problems with the Internet. So it doesn't look like it for me, but um, hopefully... <laughs> Hi, SS. Nice to see you. Peppermint skirt with pockets. Yep. That's a cute one. I have that one downloaded. I just haven't made it. Hi, Kim. Other Kim. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Michelle. Last week it got kept getting blurry and then it would get better and then it got blurry and it was just totally the internet because my it wasn't my camera. There was nothing I could do. At the camera, it looked perfectly normal. So I think it was just my internet connection or something. Good. Yeah, Sinclair is the Harper, and that is, I just made that for my um, daughter-in-law for Christmas. Let me see if that picture is on here. I don't know if I, I don't know if I put it on here. Oh yeah, here we go. This is, I made her this whole, both top pieces. The top is the laundry day tee and the, um, cardigan is the Harper. That was one of her Christmas presents and her birthday present. Her birthday's in January. Um, I mean, sorry, her birthday's December 21st. So I usually make her something that coordinates um, one for Christmas and one for her birthday. So... Hi, Lori. Nice to see you. Yes, the Colette is really good pattern. I actually have a video on that one um, way back. I did a video on the Colette uh, Sorbetto. Does anyone find that despite fabric everywhere, there's never the right fabric? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I know. But I kind of like buying more. <laughs> I told my husband the other day, I'm going to win. You know that contest, she who dies with the most fabric? Probably going to win. <laughs> but I don't, I don't mind because you know what? My husband's had several layoffs. I, long story short, the type of engineering he's in is just a little unstable. So um, I have a stash. And every time, you know, that he has not had an income, I've had a stash and I could keep sewing. So, you know, it's just, I mean, he's laid off right now and I'm sewing. And I, but the thing is, I actually am still buying fabric, but that's only because of YouTube. So um, that's my, you know, my 
that's my fabric money now. <laughs> so um, at least it, you know, that, that does help. So you're on a fabric ban, <laughs> not. <laughs> you're competing hard. Okay, Brenda. <laughs> I don't know. I do sew it up pretty fast, but I just keep adding to it all the time. So, but one of, uh, I, don't, I wish I had it upstairs to show you, but I'm sure I'm going to be showing you in a video. One of my, um, one of you guys, uh, Jana Kay, she sent me some shui shui from South Africa. It's so pretty. Now I've got to figure out what I want to do with it, but it's really, really pretty. So, um, but I'll show that to you guys in an upcoming episode. And actually, Dot sent me some beautiful jersey a while back, too, that I need to use. I keep looking at it, and I want it to be special. So <laughs> um, it's gorgeous, and um, it might be just the right thing. Maybe maybe I might even do that iris tea because it is, it is a, a suitable knit for that. So <laughs> on the fabric wagon. Hi, Ruth. Nice to see you. Fabric and buttons are like shoes. There's always something new and pretty you just have to have. Yep. And I love prints. I love prints so much that, you know, I get taken by the print and then I don't, like, I, I can't. It just, it's so pretty. Like, I'm very visual person, so... Um, and I think sometimes that's why um, I make the same patterns because you have, um, as I was saying in one of the videos, when you, when you want to make something um, that you want the fabric to speak, you want to keep the lines really simple. And so when you have tried and true simple lines, you just usually don't go looking for another one. But, um, but those are patterns that the fabric can still speak in spite of there being some detail, which is really cool. So anyway, I'm going to write down these freebies so I can start making them and that's not going to work. Now one second, I'm going to get a pencil. Oh, here's one. Here's one. Okay. So we said we had the uh, Vera top and the peppermint skirt and the Jaylee Yoko. Anybody ha else have any? Oh, obviously the laundry day tea, which we all know and love. Hi, Anna Louise. Louisa, Anna Louisa, that's so pretty. Nice to see you. I'm glad you could join us today. Thank you so much. Hi, Deanna. Nice to see you. <laughs> My best friend owns a little fabric store. So nowadays I'm not telling her like, oh, I love that fabric because she always says we'll cut some. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous too. That would be fun, fun, fun to have a friend with a fabric shop. I used to, um, for a really short little time, when I was in nursing school, I, did, I needed a job. So... Um, that was before I had any skills and was doing any clinicals or anything like that. So I took a little job at a fabric store that was opening up near our house. And I, oh, I just loved it. And I, I think I spent my whole paycheck every single time, but I didn't work there for very long because shortly after that, I actually got a job as a nurse's aide and, you know, it was more what I needed to do for school. But uh, I just, I could have stayed at that job a while, I think. <laughs> Mm 
Remo plays. Okay, we're going to block this person. What would you call that? Did we remove them? Okay. Sorry about that. Every once in a while we have somebody comes on here and acts ridiculous. So that person just got deleted. Um, a bot. Yes, that's what it is. And it, it was at least it wasn't as bad as some of them, but um, just can't tolerate that. So especially right now, you never know what's going to come across the screen. So they're gone out. I, I don't give three, three chances to people who spam our chats. It's, you know, once and you're out <laughs> so and they're just bots like she said they they don't they aren't real people who want to chat they're just trying to make waves i don't know why why does somebody do that that's what i can't figure out why what's the motive behind that just to be destructive i think which is i don't know don't understand that we just want to sew right <laughs> Anna Louise, I just placed my sewing machine on the window like yours, but had to take a bed out. And it's okay. I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah, I love sewing right here because I can see the whole neighborhood and what's going on, especially in the summertime. Somebody, sometimes I'll crack that window a little bit, you know. Um, I don't like to too much because I don't want dust blowing onto my machine. But um, it looks, it's just really fun to be up here and see what's going on, especially when it's like storming. It's really fun to see the sky and what's going on. Anyway, that I digress. But when my husband did this room for me, he asked me where I wanted my machine, and I said I want right be I want to be right in front of the window. So um, he this this is the best gift he's ever given me. This room he did this for Mother's Day. I want to say it was 2015. This was our daughter's bedroom until she got married, and so he took this bedroom and we painted it and he put everything where I needed it to be put a tv up for me he got me this cutting table just it a huge pegboard if you haven't I don't know if you've seen my pegboard in the videos but he I'm going to turn the camera so you can see um it, my room is messy right now so see that pegboard it's four foot by six foot and it literally has everything I could ever need. And it's just the best gift ever. Totally. So, um, husbands, if you're listening. <laughs> and then, actually, he bought me this table and sewing. Well, he bought me the sewing machine. I actually bought the table with my, my fabric money. <laughs> I splurged and bought the table. So, yeah, I mean, he's very supportive of my sewing, which is really great. And I know not everybody has that, so I don't take him for granted. In our old house, I was in the, yeah, I was in, I had half my crafts in the basement and half my crafts in a corner of, a, of our bedroom. And it would be like, I would have my silhouette and all that stuff in the basement. And then I'd have to drag it up when I wanted to cut something and then go back down there and use the heat press and then come up here to sew. It's so nice to have it all in one room. It's just amazing. I don't know if we'll ever, like if we downsize, I, I hope that I can find another room like this because it's just, I love this. This is my happy place. It, just, just wonderful. Late to the game today, Lisa. It's okay. We don't mind. <laughs> I know, Elizabeth, I, I was married for um, 38 years before I got one. So I know. 
I wanted one so bad and I would sew at the kitchen table and then I mean, I remember when homeschooling, I had a corner of our bedroom to sew and then our schooling was on the kitchen table and, you know, and now like my daughter has this schoolroom, you know, she's, she's homeschooling and, and they actually have a schoolroom and she's got all these bookshelves and, and I just, I look at that and I just go, oh my goodness, what I wouldn't have killed for that <laughs> when I was, when I was her age, I would have just like, oh, I would have loved that so much, but. You know what? They got educated and I got sewing done. So that's all that matters. And it was still a happy place. You know, my kitchen table was just the happy place. And, you know, my sewing corner in my bedroom was my happy place. So, yes, Paula, I know I am blessed to have this. I know not everybody does. And I don't hold one of the things. I don't, if you don't know who Corrie Ten Boom is, she um, was a Dutch woman from during World War II, she was a Dutch Christian woman who hid Jews away to keep them from, um, you know, being taken by the Nazis. And she um, said that one of the things that, um, in one of the talks, I heard her talk a couple times after she was, she came to the U.S. for some, like, speaking tours, I guess. And I've read several of her books. And she said, you know, that um, if you hold your blessings too tight, you choke the life out of them. And I've never forgotten that. And she said, hold them lightly be because and appreciate them. Because if you clutch them, you, they're not going to, you're going to just snuff them out. Just hold them gently. And I just thought that was one of the best things I've ever heard. So if you do have blessings in your life, that's what you should do. Just hold them gently. So... Last night, my husband popped into my craft room and asked what was in all those containers. Fabric, of course. I also have containers <laughs> from vinyl paper. Yep, same here. I love it so much. <laughs> Snow days. Ah. Yes, the pegboard is really great because and he's gonna actually hang a second one in here for me I keep saying that he just hasn't done it yet there's so many things I need him to do because they also have a projector sitting over there and that's gonna get mounted on the ceiling over my um, craft table and I'm taking out my ceiling fan which I have mixed feelings about but I bought some LED like an LED really bright fixture because I, I have a problem with low light in here sometimes so, and then the older I get, the worse my eyes get. So I, I really do need the LED. And um, so that has a plug on it, so I won't have to have any wires. And the projector can just project right onto my cutting table, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, I've done a lot of studying about how it works, but until it's up there, I don't know if I'm going to really know what I'm doing. So <laughs> hopefully it'll go okay. Um, I'm excited to try it because like this morning I spent an entire morning taping a pattern together um, for a, a pattern test. So if, especially for a pattern test you would think that might be a good thing to, to be able to just throw the projector file up there and do it. So yeah I'm excited about it so we'll see what happens. Thank you. I wanted to tell you guys too, if I, and I know some of you are inclined to pray, so I was going to ask you for prayer for someone that is in our group. She hasn't been on in a while because she's been busy handling her family and things that are going on. Her, um, It's Ivy, if you've seen Ivy Bader. Um, she's a regular on these chats usually, but she has, um, her dad had, had COVID, he's yeah, elderly and um, he has chronic lung problems and so he is not doing well and so she's asked for prayer for her mom and her siblings and for um, just their family to um, be able to I guess they I guess she told me they gave him like a 1% chance so um, sounds not it sounds grim for him and so Pray for, you know, God's will and for um, them to 
uh, work through the things they need to work through, and especially for his sweet wife, who's also elderly. So, um, yeah, keep her in your prayers, if you would. Yes, you can, and obviously, if God wills for him to be completely recovered, that would be awesome. I don't know his age. Um, and for a while there, it looked like he was going to get better. We've been praying together about it for a while. Um, but now he's not doing well again. And he's elderly. Um, so you don't know when God's going to call you home. You know, none of us ever knows. So um, just pray for God's will and um, whatever that is. So, so anyway, um, coming up this week, what do I have? Okay, so coming up this week, I'm going to do my top nine, which might change now that I saw that one pattern. <laughs> But um, I actually have, you know, nine patterns that I picked out, you know, that I want to make sure to make this year. Um, I did that last year and I, I didn't do all of them. Um, one of them is making it back onto the list because I just didn't get around to doing it um, because I just didn't find the right fabric. Um, but I have now found the right fabric um, for the octave coat. So I'm um, going to do that this year. And that was one that actually did make it onto the, you know, to the list again. But there were several that I just didn't do. And I really can't tell you why. I just, I'm not a person who plans and goes in detail by the plan. I'm a person who dreams and makes a plan, but I'm not afraid to change it if I think that's what I need to do. So a make nine is just that. It's a dream, what I might do this year. Um, and then... I'll probably change my mind, but that's okay. Um, and it's okay if you do too. You know, don't let anybody tell you that just because you bought that fabric for that certain thing that you can't change your mind and use it for something else. You can. <laughs> I do it all the time. And, um, you know, it's just, it's part of having a creative mind. And one thing I've grown to understand as I've gotten older is that um, while having a creative mind is a blessing, it's also, um, can be, there are downsides to it. Like we're rarely tidy. Um, and it's sometimes you have a tendency to like dream about things and create things in your head and then you can't bring them up later. So finding ways to like organize your creativity. I actually did a whole video on that for sewing, um, well, probably a year ago now. It's called or, uh, Creation Out of Chaos or something like that. And that's how I use Trello for that. But um, it's okay, though. It's okay to change your mind, and it's okay to move on if something isn't working. Um, that's how great things are done. Um, nothing ever that was worth the time was ever come by with, on a first try or... Um, you know, without some blood, sweat, and tears. So um, we're going to do things that don't work. We're going to dream about things that ultimately don't turn out the way we thought of them. And you know what? It's okay. It's really okay. And that's what I want for you guys to, you know, because I hear so many times I'm afraid to do this. I'm afraid to, to make a PDF pattern. I'm afraid to cut into this, pet, this fabric because it's so pretty. You know, and you know what? Number one, it's only fabric. Yes, it might be expensive, but you know what? There's other fabric. So if you ruin it, lesson learned. Maybe it might hurt a little bit financially if it was expensive, but ultimately, maybe that was just an expensive lesson. So don't be afraid to try things. Jump in there. Um, there's lots of people who can help. I'll, I'll help whenever I can. There's the Facebook group. There's so many people that help each other on there. It makes me feel so good when I see that. I love it when I go to answer a question and it's already been answered by like six people. So <laughs> um, there's help out there, a lot of help. So um, don't be afraid. So um, this year I want to choose uh, faith over fear and I want to choose... Um, action over, you know, resignation, I guess. 
So um, just don't be afraid to just put yourself out there and do it. Education is never free. Teresa, that is so, so right. Teresa keeps a notebook in her sewing room and jot down ideas. Sometimes I get around to doing them and sometimes I change my mind. That's what I do, um, used to do with a notebook. Now I do it with Trello. Like I have, let me show you last year. So I have this Trello. I don't know if you can see. All right, so these are all the boards I have in Trello. Boards are just like notebooks, okay? So here is monthly sewing. This is monthly sewing from 2020, right? So here this, sorry about the bathing suit picture right up front there. I, that's when I was sewing for Mexico, remember? Um, so I, this, these all start like ideas, okay? And then the red label just means that they were completed, all right? And then I go through, and here's a list of things that I didn't really do. And then as you go along, and then I have, um, this is every month, right? And then I have leftover projects, see? And these all got moved to 2021. And maybe I'll do them and maybe I won't. But um, there's different things. Sewing for my grandkids, you know, that's inspiration and things I've done. And then uh, I just added that one. And then I put some stats. And then here's like my top 10 makes. That's what I, how I chose them was going through here. Um, but now that looks great. But when I show you what 2021 looks like, you know, I've only got one thing on there so far, and um, I'm going to be adding some of the leftover projects in here. This is my Make 9, which you're going to hear more about, but I'll go along and I'll put, okay, I want to make this, 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 and I'll fill them in, and like last year, I had a, a something that I wanted to make my husband that was a winter item, and it didn't get done, so I just took that and I whoop, moved it over to like uh, November of the following year um, instead of, you know, losing it completely, you know, then the next year, did I want to make it? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but at least I didn't lose the idea. So that's how I use it. And I also do things for the plan, things for the channel that way too. And I write down ideas that don't get done because like either somebody else has done them. You know, I try not to do a complete repeat of something at least that I've seen, I don't see everybody, but if I've seen somebody do something exactly the same as what I was planning to do, I'm not going to do it. So just, uh, you know, just a, a, another way to do it. It's like a notebook, but it's just more, um, if you're electronically inclined, it's just a way to do it that way. It's an app and it's free. So it's just called Trello and it's in the app store. Um, on Apple and it, it also is on Google Play, I believe. And you can also just do it on the web. So um, it all, and all your devices will talk to each other. Like I can pull that same thing up on my phone, which is really great. So. Let's see, gotta catch up now. <laughs> Good. Oh. Uh, that's why I buy fabric at HB, but right now I just sew what I find at Walmart. And I think I'm a few steps to use my expensive ones. Yeah, you can do that. That That's a good way to, to look at it. You can learn on some cheaper fabric. I use that for fabric tests, or not fabric tests, pattern tests. I don't use expensive fabric um, for the first version of anything because I don't know if it's going to Good, be good, you know, or not. <laughs> kind of is like a vi visual journal f for sure. Trello is free. Any kind, and I'm a, you know, if you're a visual person, which I think most of us are probably, if we sew, we probably are visual, a little bit kinesthetic, a little bit visual. Um, yeah, it's great for visual people. You can, I also fab, uh, categorize my fabric stash in there as well. I don't do my patterns because there's a specific app for that called Sewing Patterns. And I also did a, a video on that a while back. And it's really great. And I, 
I just love that. So I haven't, and I had so much in there already, so I have not switched that over to Trello. Uh, let's see. Lisa said, I've sewn for years and had my fails with knit neck bands. Tried over the years, finally conquered it. Awesome. That is amazing. Doesn't that feel good? That just feels so good. You know, I've had more than six. So, Tony, I wouldn't. Six is nothing. <laughs> I've been, I probably, I've done more than six unsuccessful. <laughs> Donna says, I, hi, Donna. I think, think you're a new name. <laughs> nice to see you. I was given a sewing journal for Christmas. Awesome. That's an idea, too. If you, some people just really want paper. Um, but I like, I'm an electronic person, so I, you know, I do things electronically. But like my daughter, she's got one of those bullet journals for homeschooling and, you know, for Bible study and stuff. And, you know, she wants paper. She wants, she wants to do it on paper. But I'm a, I'm a, you know, I don't like necessarily, I wrote this list down, but as soon as I'm done here, I'll be putting it in, in Trello. So anyway, hello, Michael. I don't know who you are. I don't know if this is a real person or not. I, may, I think maybe not. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought too, Brenda. I hit him. Not hit, hid, H-I-D, hid him. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not unusual to um, do something three times before it fits. Pants, probably going to take you more than, more than three times until you get that aha feeling. Um, and then they get tweaked still. <laughs> I still tweak them. You can't attach a picture in here, Verna, but if you could maybe put it on the Facebook group. Unfortunately, this platform doesn't allow um, you to upload a picture in the chat. But, um, but Dee, if you could uh, go ahead and put that on Facebook, that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Well, does anybody have any other questions? Hi, Secret Siren. That's why you wear stretch pants. Yeah, I, I, I like I like my stretch pants too, but I there are some that fit better than others though, even if they are stretchy. So um, I like stretch pants that um, don't cling and come up far enough in the back and don't have a bunch of wrinkles in the wrong places. It's still nice for them to, they're still good to get those to fit. But stretch pants are nice, I agree. Yes, I agree, Jay. Um, I think um, I looked on PBS yesterday, and they still have Nancy's notions, uh, Nancy Zeman's programs on there. So if you're where you can get PBS, that they have an app, and you can watch like all her old episodes and I saw she has like a five video fitting series um, and I thought maybe I'd watch that because it looked like I've heard that her fitting videos are really good I used to watch her faithfully like when I was like a young mom like she was the bomb to me I watched her like every single time it was on then I kind of lost track but um, yeah I saw that on PBS and I thought I need to watch those. That's probably some that I've seen before and maybe the information just didn't sink in or whatever. So I, I need to watch them again. So um, that's an idea. If you have a PBS, you can get some good, good instruction that way. I would trust anything. She said Nancy Zeman was just the best seamstress 
She was amazing. Hello. My son is doing well. He, um, his COVID was, uh, his, did, all he ever had was um, a fever and chills for two days. Um, but he was positive. But his quarantine was up the day before Christmas Eve, so they were able to go to Florida to see her parents. And he's back and doing well. So um, he threw his back out, so he, um, he was home this week, but he's, he's doing well. Um, no, I was telling you guys about yesterday. So yesterday I went to Costco, and they had these leather couches. And um, we've been saying we needed to get new, our sectionals kind of was, it's kind of ripping and not good. So um, we wanted to get it. But then my, my son-in-law had torn, not torn, but injured his trapezius muscle and was off work like last week. So I didn't even call him. And then my son was home with a uh, back injury from work and I didn't even know but I called to see if he could help us get this couch because Costco the way it works is if you buy it you got to take it right then they, they don't hold it for you you can't they won't deliver and you just got to take it so we were you know it turned out my son-in-law was fine and he said he could get it for us and we just rounded up another person and so we ended up tearing our house apart and if I, I can't even, I'm too embarrassed to show you, but we had literally a pile this big of stuff that was in that sofa. Because, I mean, it's been sitting there for like at least 15 years. And it was like a walk down memory lane because it was like, oh, I remember when we lost that teeny little toy or that Hot Wheel car or this, this or that. And, um, yeah. I just texted the picture of all this stuff to my kids and said, lost and found, come claim it. Because a lot of it was just little toys. I did find a pair of earrings that I thought were gone forever, though. And um, but, but the, the new couch was amazing. And the sectional is going to get a new home in my son's basement. And um, we just ordered a chair. Uh, we decided that if we were going to get new, we weren't going to get a sectional because if we downsize in our older age here, we probably may not have room for a sectional. So we got the couch and a chair. So I'm excited and really wasn't as much money as I thought it would be. So I'm a happy girl today for that. Jay, nice to see you. Take care. I really enjoy chatting with you. <laughs> hole in the couch <laughs> yeah it was just like ooh, there's stuff down there that I mean we just thought it was lost forever thank you Jay <laughs> me too <laughs> when is your surgery Heidi refresh my memory ah uh. Did she say it and I just missed the thing here? I know it's coming up. I just don't remember when. Okay, you must have said that. I remember when we were talking before, Heidi, you told me when your surgery was. I know it was coming up in January, so I'm thinking it's pretty soon. Tomorrow. Oh, my goodness, Heidi. I will be praying for you. Please let us know. Um, I may message you. Um, I'm going to message you my um, mobile number, and uh, maybe you could let it just text and let me know or have your husband or somebody just text me and let me know that everything went okay and I can relay it on the Facebook group because I know everybody's going to be wondering how you are. So I'm going to message you if that's okay. And if you can't, that's okay too. But if you can let us know, that way I can just post it and let everybody know. So, uh, grandbaby's on the way over. Dee's going to babysit. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Well, Heidi, I will be praying for you. And remember, we talked. I I've been there. Um, so and and it's okay. And I'm okay. So it'll be all right. You you're gonna feel better in the recovery room. I promise. So. All right. We'll be we will be praying for you. All right. So. Oh, tomorrow and then Wednesday, two-part event. Okay. Well, we're going to be praying, and um, I'm going to text you. Just So if, if any, anybody that can, can let us know how you're doing, you'll just have my direct text number that way. It can just let me know. All right. Um, I'm going to let you all go and go cook some dinner for my husband. I hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon and day. And... Um, yeah, I'll see you on the Facebook group and keep those keep those free pattern ideas going. I really like that, guys. I think that would be a great video to do. So I'm going to be doing some research on that and some sewing up of things so we can do that. So, all right. Well, you guys stay, stay well and take care, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Happy sewing.